This is part five of the exam prep videos um, for the lead up to the half yearly exam uh, coming up. Uh, this will be the last video on chapter 12, going through the main ideas, the main important ideas for the exam. So I'm going to talk about radioactive half-life to begin with. This is the time it takes for a substance to reduce by half its original amount. Now, there's different ways to define it, but it's basically something, you start off with something at time X, and you end up with half that, that amount. Whatever time it takes here, that's the half-life. Uh, suppose, so they'll, they'll love to give you either a graph, or they'll ask you to draw a graph. Let me give you a graph. I'm not going to tell you which one, obviously. Let's suppose I give you a graph of time, days, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40... 10, 20, 30. Okay, suppose I've got a graph that shows the radioactive decay of some element X. What it tells you is that time zero, okay, initially, it's at 100%. To work out the half-life, so you work out what a half of 100%. Half of 100% is 50%. So you literally read it off the graph. Draw it properly. And wherever the, the percentage meets the graph, so the 50% here, wherever it hits it, you go down, and that's how many days in this case. It's 20 days. That's the half-life. Very simple. Okay, that could be a one marker there. Or they might give you a table and ask you to draw it. I'm not going to draw a graph, i um, done plenty of practice on this, but I'll give you a table nevertheless, or they could give you a table and ask you to answer questions. So you've got a table of showing um, how much of an amount of substance uh, Y in grams is left after a certain amount of days. Let's suppose um, you're asked to find what the trend is in this case. So if you look here, 200 to 150, there's uh, minus 50 grams. And then from 150 to 100, there's minus 50 grams again. 100 to 50, there's minus 50 grams. So that's the trend there. Yeah? It's going down by 50 grams uh, every day. Let's suppose I ask you to predict how many will be left after four days. It's quite simple. 50 minus 50 using the trends, you'll get zero. So there'll be zero left. Okay. Um, let's suppose I ask you to graph it. Now I'm going to show you where... So Typically a graph question will, will be around four or five marks. Typically four, four marks. I'll give you um, graph paper. Your job is to draw the axes in. Now, the independent variable goes down here. Okay. I'm down here. I for independent, that's the thing that's changing, that's time. Time is changing, and the amount of substance remaining that's being measured, that goes on the y-axis, the dependent variable. So independent, uh, the independent variable is time at the bottom. Days, you must write the units, or you'll lose marks. And dependent variable is the amount of substance y, which is in grams. So all you're doing is literally copying down the titles. Okay. Right there, that's two marks, typically. Okay, one mark for um, the correct positioning of the variables and one mark for the labeling of the axes. Right there, effortless. Two marks. Um, another mark for... Uh, I've got to obviously um, put in the scales, so zero. Let's go up by one for days. One, two, three, four. Uh, in terms of uh, amount remaining in grams, we can go up by 50. Dot, 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 I'm not going to do it all. That's two marks right there. So variables and their units and the axes labeled, that's two marks. You now have to, when you sketch it, that's your third mark. Now you must give a title and the title must have units. Even my U12 students get this wrong and they lose a mark for this. Um, and I hate to say that I tolerate this. You have to have units so you can write amount of substance y in grams versus time 
in those. Okay, you put the dependent variable first, always, and the independent variable next. Okay, so that's your four marks right there. Let me get into now nuclear um, energy and its uses in industry and medicine. It's useful, useful to know, particularly for the exam, where it's used and what the pros and cons are. So in industry, pro, it's used to detect defects. Defects are like mistakes, if you wish. Mistakes, holes, gaps in materials. Um, to, so they can detect defects in materials. Um, for like aircraft wings, obviously they have to be free of defects. What they do is they shoot radiation through the wing and they see how much comes out the other end. If not much radiation comes out the other end, that means it's low in defects. If a lot comes out, there's a lot of defects because there's gaps, right? And the radi radiation can go through. So that's a pro there. Um, another pro is can provide nuclear energy. So nuclear power plants, um, they provide lots of energy. Um, however, a con associated with nuclear power is a potential radiation leakage and lots of waste produced. Okay, that, that's for nuclear fission, but anyway, that's something else. There's other um, forms of nuclear power that are nuclear energy that are a lot uh, less polluting, but anyway. In medicine, obvious pro is radiation therapy. Okay, to target and kill cancer cells. Okay, that helps save lives, in other words. Saves lives. Uh, however, there's a con. And I'm sure you already know this. It can harm healthy surrounding cells, tissues, and even organs. Okay, and also there's side effects. I'm sure you know this already. Um, hair loss, um, fatigue, nausea, so on and so forth. But that's that's nuclear. Um, that's radioactivity in a nutshell. And that's what you'd be required to know in the exam, pretty much.